Hey guys, welcome back. This is Mike from 60 Clicks, and today I'm going to do a state of the collection video. I'll take you through my entire collection, uh, sort of where I'm at with each piece. And I'm not going to waste a lot of time, so I, I just want to jump right into things and uh, show you my latest acquisition, which is the piece I just reviewed, the Seiko Flight Chronograph. Um, you know, this is a really great piece. It's it's nice to have just a low maintenance quartz chronograph in the collection, something that doesn't need to be reset every time you put it on. Uh, it's really useful with the chronograph function, and of course the alarm and uh, the slide roll. If you know how to use it, can come in handy on a daily basis as well. Um, but it's just a really great piece. It's easy to wear. It's super casual, um, and it's something that you can sort of strap on every day. Um, the next piece I'll show you guys is my hiking watch. This is my Sunto Core Altitude. Um, I got this watch a few months ago. It's got the uh, special edition gray rubber band. Uh, this comes in a lot of different configurations, but this is a pretty fun watch to wear hiking. It's sort of your basic ABC watch uh, with your altimeter and your barometer for uh, tracking pressure and altitude, uh, sunrise data, things like that. It's pretty neat. It keeps a logbook of all of your hikes, and I can sort of go back into my logbook and um, review the hikes that I've completed and the uh, the dates, the, to the total time, um, and the uh, peak altitude. It's it's kind of neat. It lets you walk through things, and it sort of visualizes your climb as well. Um, I haven't had to change the battery yet, but I anticipate that will probably co be coming pretty soon. The next piece here, uh, you probably recognize, this is the Seiko SKX009 Diver. Uh, sort of a entry-level mechanical dive watch that everybody has in their collection. You know, I, cho I chose the SKX009 over the 007 just because I wanted something a little bit different with the Pepsi bezel, just to, just to make it stand out a, a bit and have uh, you know just a more interesting piece. Um, I haven't worn this watch in a couple weeks. I think I will probably end up selling this or trading this and getting the Seiko Turtle, um, only because you know I love the style, but um, I'd like to get the upgraded movement and the the Turtle is just a little bit uh, more proportioned. This one is very tall, um, especially with the NATO, and uh, you know I find myself not wearing it as much, even though I still think it's a really really great piece for the price. Um, pretty hard to beat. So the jewel of my collection is my Omega Speedmaster. Uh, this is the Moon Watch with the solid case back, and uh, you know it's, this is another watch that really needs no introduction. It's probably my favorite watch in my collection. Uh, I know it's it's pretty close between my two Omegas, but I just love the the Hess lights and the domed crystal here. It just gives it such a great vintage feel and it's something um, that you can wear in just about any situation. Uh, it's casual, it's professional, it's just a classic watch. Super high quality, um, really fun to use and uh, something that I don't wear every day but uh, when I do wear it it's just a really special piece. So next we have the Squall 1521. This is my Blue Diver. Um, otherwise known as the 50 Atmos. Um, so this is a very fun piece. This is the uh, matte version. So there's a couple different versions of this watch. You can get the polished steel version and then this is the matte version. It also comes in a few different colors. I really like the blue on this watch. It's, it's a very different blue than you see in a lot of the other blue divers. Um, and just the way that it contrasts with the orange, it really pops. Um, this is a, a 42 millimeter diver that wears really well on smaller wrists and um, with the flat crystal and the, the curved lugs and it's it's sort of my go-to summer watch and uh, really look forward to wearing this again here when it when it heats back up all right so moving on to the next piece here um, my beloved German Zinn 556 now, this is a keeper for me and this is just a watch I, I can't get away from I, I never want to sell this watch it's just um, I don't know, it's just the perfect watch for me. It, it feels like a perfect size, 38 and a half millimeters, and it's not too thick. Um, 
I love the, the quality of the bracelet and the case. Everything feels just very well built. It's really simple. There's no pretension. Uh, the, but the you know the back and the movement are super beautiful. All this thing does is tell the time and tell the day. But uh, that's all it really needs to do. And it just feels like a solid, high-quality watch. And, um, you know, I, I'll never get rid of this. And I think I'm looking to acquire a 356 next. Uh, maybe a 104, uh, but definitely want to get another Sin. Uh, it's just a watch that I get a lot of enjoyment after and a brand that I really admire. So looking forward to uh, checking out more from this brand. So the next one up is the Omega Seamaster 2254. Uh, so this is um, an older generation Seamaster. It's discontinued, but uh, this is my favorite Seamaster I like this a lot better than the Skeleton Hands uh, James Bond Seamaster. I think this one has a much more classic look. Just really love the sword hands and the, the helium escape valve and the wave dial. Everything about it just screams classic. Um, and I just I really like wearing this watch because it's so versatile. It's uh, it's a great sports watch. I can take it diving. Um, I can wear it to work. It's it, it's very professional looking and polished. It's got that dressy diver vibe to it. Um, but it's still a tool wash. It's still very tough. And um, if I had to reduce my collection down to one watch, this would probably be the one. So next watch I'll show you guys. This is the Steinhardt Ocean Vintage Military. So I bought this uh, from somebody on Watch You Seek. This is the first edition of the Ocean Vintage Military or the OVM. Um, obviously this is a Rolex mil sub homage. Uh, I just really like this watch even though it's a little bit too big for me. Uh, the lug to lug is I think about 52 millimeters and it's it's just wears a little bit too big for me. I, I can't bring myself to get rid of it. It just feels like such a high quality piece. Uh, for this price, and uh, I just I can't get rid of it. And uh, actually, the prices have gone up on this since I since I bought it. I think um, the first versions, since they're now discontinued, um, can be upwards of seven hundred bucks. So uh, the next diver I want to show you guys is this is uh, my Tutima six seventy dive watch. It's another German diver. Um, this is just a very thin diver and it's I really like having this in my collection because it's it's very unobtrusive it's very wearable um, and I really like the basic military look at this obviously I, I really like German style watches and um, this is another one that's hard to find now that I know the Pacific uh, was reintroduced at a I believe a 43 millimeter size um, this is the 40 millimeter size which I prefer and uh, it's got the German English date wheel and the, the orange seconds hand and uh, it's, it's got that steel bezel. It's just a fun watch. This is another one I probably will never get rid of. Uh, so moving on, this is a special watch. This was one I found in my grandfather's watch box. Um, this is a late 60s Seiko 5 and uh, it's, uh, I guess it's a dress watch. It's it's sort of casual, but it's got some dressy elements to it. The crazy thing about this watch is I took it out of the watch box, and this thing hasn't been serviced for probably 40 years, and um, it just started up. It just runs. I probably need to bring it in and get it professionally serviced. Uh, I don't think it's running very accurately, but uh, for an old Seiko 5, they talk about these movements lasting forever. Uh, they really do. Um, so my last mechanical I want to show you guys, uh, this is my Stova Antia KS. So this is my pretty much my only real dress watch, um, and I really like the Antia. It's it's just got a simple Bauhaus style to it with the, the Bauhaus numbers, and uh, the KS version of this watch is slightly smaller. There's a couple different versions of, the, of this watch that are larger, but a very simple watch, uh, very pretty hand-wound movement. Uh, it's just a joy to, to put on. Um, and, uh, you know, this is a great watch to wear to weddings or even to wear to work. Uh, it's very legible. And um, the wait time in these watches can be you know, up to seven, 
eight, nine months new from the factory, but uh, they can be had on the forums if you know where to look. Okay, a couple more watches. These are my digital beaters. This is my uh, Casio G Rescue. Um, this is the Tide Graph version with the moon phase. And uh, this is just my beat em up watch that I wear uh, out in the surf for uh, swimming or working out. It's a huge watch, but uh, it's got a lot of great features to it. I think I will probably upgrade this guy and get a Casio Rangeman uh, sometime in the future, so keep an eye out on that. But uh, this wears pretty well for a big watch, and it's it's fun to wear. I like to, to wear this watch. Um, uh, the only knock on this watch really is the, the negative display. I think I'd probably go with the positive display next time just because it's, it's sort of hard to read in some cases, but uh, not a big deal. Last but not least is the G-Shock 5610. Uh, as far as cheap Casio beaters go, this is this is the one to buy. It's I love the Casio squares. They're uh, perfect size. They're not as huge as the other G-Shocks. And uh, this one, the 5610, has got the solar charging and the uh, multiband 6 atomic sync which is uh, an upgrade over the 5600 but uh, you know it's got all the classic G-Shock features like the world time and the timer and the stopwatch and the alarms and just uh, you know around the house type of watch uh, this this one is by far my favorite to wear uh, it's it's just an ugly plastic watch but um, it's quite useful and uh, quite durable I can't recommend this one enough and that's it for now that's my entire collection uh, so I hope to do another update in a couple months to let you guys know how things are evolving and changing. Um, as you can see, I've got the watch tan line, uh, so you know I'm a, a true addict. But uh, let me know what you think in the comments, and if you'd like to uh, watch some more in-depth view reviews of these watches, check out my channel or visit my website at 60clicks.com for more. Thanks, guys.